Now, President Obama is saying Republicans are blocking every good idea that he has. But the Washington Post disagrees, giving him three Pinocchios. You know what that means for that statement. Here is the president. But so far this year, Republicans in Congress have blocked every serious idea to strengthen the middle class. Lifting the minimum wage, fair pay, student loan reform. They said no to all of it. So is the president stretching the truth a tad, or is his criticism correct? <sighs> South Dakota Senator John Thune is a Senate Finance Committee member and chairman of the Senate Republican Conference. Senator, good morning and welcome to the Fox News Channel this morning. Good uh, morning, Eric. Always nice to be good with to you. Good to see you, sir. When you hear the president say that, you know, so it's you guys. It's your fault. You're, you're blocking everything he's trying to do. Right. Well, and the Washington Post fact checker, as you mentioned, uh, Eric, basically busted the president on that statement, gave him three Pinocchios, which means this is a really big whopper uh, that he's been telling. And if you look at the facts, they tell an entirely different story. There are 284 bills that have passed the House of Representatives that have been sent to the Senate. Forty of those bills are jobs bills. The Republican-led House of Representatives has passed four times as many bills as the Democrat-led uh, Senate has. And if you look at the number of bills signed into law this year by the president, 120, only about a quarter of those originated in the Democrat-controlled Senate. So the president has a problem on Capitol Hill, but it's not with Republicans, it's with his party, the Democrats, who consistently block job-creating bills, things that would get our economy growing again. Well, when he says the word Republicans, you think he could, should insert Harry Reid? Right. Well, he could. I mean, Harry Reid, for all intents and purposes, has turned the floor of the United States Senate into kind of a political circus. Uh, all he does is puts up show votes that are designed to try and give them a political advantage uh, going into the fall campaigns. Any meaningful or serious legislation has been shelved. And, and, and what he's doing in terms of uh, blocking amendments, you know, in the last year, since July, this time a year ago, there have only been 11 uh, amendments voted on the floor of the United States Senate that have been offered by Republicans. That's less than one a month in the world's greatest deliberative body. And so for all intents and purposes, the United States Senate, the floor of the Senate has been shut down by Harry Reid, who has made a decision that he doesn't want to expose his Democrat members to any difficult votes going into this election. And so he's going to use the floor of the Senate simply to try and get votes that he thinks will, will make them look good. And in anything serious, including appropriation bills, we haven't moved a single appropriation bill through the United States Senate this year. Those things have all kind of been put on the back burner. And that's unfortunate because the American people uh, deserve to have their voices heard in the process. And when you can't even get amendments considered and voted on, uh, that simply doesn't happen. You know, Senator, you mentioned the world's greatest deliberative body. I mean, what happened to the Senate giants, Everett Dirksen, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, those Jake Javits, those who would, on all sides of the aisle, would get down, sit together, and get something done? Well, that, there was a day when that was the case, but it certainly isn't true today. And, you know, if you take the way that Senator Reid is running the Senate, um, it's really unprecedented. He has a procedure called filling the amendment tree, which is the procedure he uses to block amendments from being considered to bills that are brought on the floor of the United States Senate. And he's used that procedure, I think, 89 times, uh, and, and that's more than twice all the previous uh, floor leaders combined uh, in history. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it really is something that we've not seen before. And what it simply means, again, is that the people in this country, many of whom elect uh, their senators to come here to express their views, to get their ideas considered, aren't having their voices heard in the political process. That's unfortunate, obviously, uh, for us as senators, but it's really unfortunate for the people of this country who want to have solutions put forward that would help create jobs and grow the economy. And as I said, 40 bills have been sent, jobs bills have sent by, been sent by the House of Representatives to the Senate, and they're sitting at the Senate desk and uh, unlikely to be taken up by, uh, by the majority leader here. So finally, leader Senator, here. Senator, quickly, I mean, what can, what can be done? Anything that can be done to break that logjam? Well, I think the best thing that can be done, Eric, in my view, is to flip the Senate and uh, get us the majority in the, in the fall campaign. Because I think that if we get the majority back in the United States Senate, we will return to regular order. We will consider amendments. We will vote. You know, that's what senators are sent here to do. If you don't want to make hard votes, you shouldn't run for the United States Senate. But there's nothing happening in the Senate today. And as I said, uh, I think the only thing that's going to change that is a change in the politics of the Senate, uh, which certainly can happen this November when people go to vote. All right, Senator John Thune, uh, American people want something done. Maybe that'll Thanks. happen. Thank you so much I for joining so. us this morning. Of Thanks, course. Eric.